All praises to God who's head of my life, reference to our pastor, Dr. Miller, his absence, uh, the brother preachers that are here, you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, when I tell you it's a blessing, it's an absolute blessing indeed to be in the house of the Lord, amen? Amen. I'll be reading the Galatians, the sixth chapter, beginning at verse six. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teach it in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, 
For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we think not. May God add a blessing to the reader, the hearer, and most of the do of his holy word. Shall we pray? Oh, gracious master, dear Lord, we call on your holy and righteous name right now, dear God. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to be profound beneficiaries of the great gospel, dear master. We thank you, dear Lord, for you considering us to save our souls, to cleanse our hearts and regulate our minds, dear God. We thank you, dear Lord, for considering us, your humble servants, to come into the house of worship and praise and lift up your holy and your righteous name, dear God. We thank you for your prolific son, Jesus Christ, that same Christ, Father, that allowed us to have life everlasting, that came that we may have life and have that same life more abundantly, dear God. And for that, we want to say thank you, dear God. Praying for our church family, Mount Hebron as a whole, Bless every auxiliary, every ministry, from the parking lot to the kitchen stove. We ask for your grace to cover us right now, dear God. Praying for our, our young people's ministry, Father. Young people in the word, dear God. Praying for BTU, dear God. Praying, praying that you bless and, and touch every, every mountain heart, dear God. Praying, dear God, that you bless the, the mission body. Leap, lift, and prime, dear, dear Master. Praying for my associate minister, brothers, that we stand together as clergymen of God to do your will, your way, dear God. Praying for our pastor and his wife, that she may bless in a, in a powerful, loving kind of way, dear God. Asking, Father, that you continue to move your spirit around and about this place, this building, dear God. Usher your grace in every room, dear Master. Shower us with your mercy and your tender love, dear God. The agape love that only you could give, dear Father. The understanding that only you could provide, dear master. The love and, and, and the, the covenant of love that you give us each and every day. Because every day is new mercies and every day is new grace. And for that, we just want to say thank you, dear father. As I extend a, a heartfelt loving prayer for my very own nieces and my very own children. That you may bless faith and miracle and all these children. BJ and Liz, father. Everyone, one by one and name by name, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, whoever part of my family, that you may extend the love and the gratitude and the, and the grace that's needed right now in the powerful loving name of Jesus, dear Master. This world needs you, dear God. We're living in peerless times. But we serve a God that sits high and looks low. And for that, Father, I want to say thank you for being God and God all by yourself. A special prayer for Dr. Max Miller. First Lady, Sister Rhonda Miller, that you may bless him in a powerful, loving kind of way to lead effective ministry and have effective worship, Father, in the effective body of Christ, dear Father. Praying for this community that you may uplift. Praying for the school system that you may uplift in this community. Praying for those under highways and byways that you may uplift. Praying for those who uh, don't know you're in a part of, of their sin that you, that you may uplift. But I'm thankful, dear Master, that I, that I know somebody. I'm thankful that I, that I have a connection with somebody. I'm thankful, dear Master, that we have the love of God in our hearts, dear God. Because, Father, when the roads seem to be rough, Father, I know somebody that I can extend out my hand to and say, Father, if it not only be for you, dear Master, that you may provide grace where grace is needed, provide love where love is needed, dear God. And strengthen us, Father, on this Christian journey. Because we can't walk a Christian life without having the artifacts of Christ. Without having a profound religion. Without having a profound understanding. Without, without being due diligence of God's great word. Father, when the Bibles and the hymn books all have been saying, read, quoted, and the sermons have been preached for the last time. We want to hear your wonderful voice say, job well done, sir job well done. These and other blessings we ask in a, in a powerful loving name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and thank God.
I had somebody tonight. We need to hear a word from the Lord. We need to hear from you. We need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, I don't Show us your perfect way. We need to hear from you. There is no other way. Ooh. That we can live. Some of y'all going to get that in a minute. We about to hear a word tonight, but we need to hear from you. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. We need a word from you. I got to hear from you tonight. I want to hear from you tonight. If we don't hear from what will we do? Show us your pain. Fig way. I said, show us your pain. Your perfect way. If we don't hear. We need to hear from you. Right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it's a word tonight. I know we got a word tonight. And if we don't hear from you, what will we do? Show us your perfect way. Ain't none perfect but the Father. Show us your perfect way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we don't hear you. What will we do? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's a word tonight. We need to receive the word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to receive the word. Can't nobody do us like Jesus. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Oh. Come on and preach the word. Hallelujah. Oh.
all the people said amen. Come on, let's give it up for Brother Hill on tonight. Thank God for that song. That song is a touching song. Thank God for him and Brother Moshe and Reverend Baptiste and to our prayer tonight. Uh, Reverend White and to all of you that are here tonight. There is a word and we want to go right back to where we were on last Wednesday night live. We want to go back to the homonyms of scriptures. Um, Brother Hill had me ready and fired up and ready to shout in this place tonight. We thank God for him ministering to us in song. Let's do this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 51 through 58. Um, I'm, you can go ahead and sit down because I'm not going to read all of that. And also 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Uh, 13 through 18, if you would look at that as well. And you want to know how you're going to look at both of them? Well, we'll keep flipping back and forth unless you utilize your phone for more than just a telephone and use it for a smart device. We want to go back and pick up where we left off. Uh, Brother Moshe, we want to bring some more clarity to this thing that we know as death. We want to bring some more clarity to the word of God with the homonyms of scripture. We want to talk tonight, if I can get my Zoom crowd on and not me looking at myself, I sure would be happy so that we can go ahead and move to this word tonight. Let's, let's recap tonight uh, what we discussed on last Wednesday night. The homonyms of scripture are likened to the homonyms in the English class. The homonym of scripture is likened to the homonyms in the English class. And you know, we talked about it, the homonym, that they may be spelled identical. They have a different meaning. Or they may not be spelled the same, but they have the same pronunciation. But they do not have the same meaning. Someone that's been to school would say we don't have the same etymology. The meaning is different. And it's not because of the spelling. It's not because of the pronunciation. And in scripture tonight, we'll find out that it's not because it seems as if it sounds the same. And again, may I, may I tell you that we can have the exact same author dealing with the exact same thing, but not be the exact same scripture. It does not have the same meaning. And we talked about some words that I don't have to go back over tonight that you can look them up yourselves when you get home. Look up homonyms and you'll find some if you've forgotten what that word actually meant. So let me do this for us. Just as we know words as homonyms, these two scriptures that we're talking about tonight in the book, that Paul wrote to the Corinthian church that had different problems than the Thessalonica church. That Paul is the author of both of these books. And as he offers these books, I want to let you know that these two scriptures, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, especially when they are not studied correctly, when they have not been through the fire of the five steps of studying, or they have not been properly dissected or exegeted. When we do not properly do this, and let me go ahead and tell you, there's a difference when a pastor or a person begins to study and we attempt to eisegete when we should be exegeting. That word eisegete means that when I put into God's word what I want it to mean, but yet exegete means that when you pull out of the text 
what God is trying to tell us. There's a purpose for scripture. There's a purpose for text. But we must have at least five steps. Can I go ahead and give them to you tonight? That when we are looking at these two passages of scripture, we must first take our first step of observation. You can write that down if you would like. Observation, no matter what the text is, it must be observed. So the first step is observation. And when you look at Corinthian and Thessalonians, if you observe it, you'll find out that they do have some similarities, but you'll find out that they are more perpendicular than they are parallel. So once we look at observation and we observe what the text is saying, when we check the content and the context, we'll find out that the author here is not talking about the same thing. Once we look at this observation, we have to move on to investigation. You have to investigate what you are observing. Because when we lack in our investigation, we'll find out that our observation can become obscure. So once we observe, for example, I'm looking at Reverend Wooten and Reverend Wooten is looking at me. But if Brother Steelwell asks Reverend Wooten what he sees, he's not going to see what I see. And the reason why he's not going to see what I see, because we are looking in opposite directions. And because we are looking in opposite directions, Brother Hill says that we are in the same church, so we should see the same thing. But the reason why we don't see the same thing is because even though we're in the same place and we can spell the same church, the direction that we're looking is different. That's our investigation. And once we investigate what we have observed, we must begin to interrogate. And when you interrogate, when I interrogate the text, it causes for me to do some writing because I don't have but one shot to give God the glory on the scripture that he had written. I don't have but one time. I don't have but one opportunity. And the reason why I'm looking at these two particular verses tonight and these two passages of scripture is because far too many times, too many of us from the pulpit to the pew, from the leadership classes to workshops, we take these scriptures and put them together because we think that the folk in the pew do not understand what the word of God says. But what we find out tonight that when we interrogate the text, that they are talking about two different things. That maybe both of them are talking about death. And because both of them are talking about death, Reverend Garden, we just take it for granted that since Paul wrote it, and since it sounds alike, that we can combine the two together. But I come by tonight to tell you, when you make a combination of the two, you have God's word and let me drop this in your laps for free I'm getting happy up in here let me drop this in your laps for free that the reason why I want to make sure the text is right is because there's somebody that's listening for a word and when you're listening for a word and you're listening from a word from God then surely we ought to make sure that we have the word right check it out check it out check it out after we observe with observation and we move into investigation. I was looking at CSI the other day and CSI, the uh, Horatio tells them that you must investigate before you go and make sure you interrogate. Because you don't want to interrogate the wrong thing, so you must investigate before you interrogate. Because once you move past investigation into interrogation, it's now time for interpretation. 
we look at this text because of the interpreting and this is where we get off course because we utilize those two or three minutes that preachers hardly ever hold to and those of you that fall out with me when you come to home going services because the family has put you on for two minutes and you want to combine scriptures that really don't go together and mess up the whole text and I'll be begging you to sit down but you want to stand up because when you don't properly interrogate it you don't properly interpret it so watch this when you go to interpretation we must not interpret in the form and fashion that I believe because God told us to believe in the word and if you've had all week to study God's word when the people come to church whether it's our Zoom location whether it's our Facebook location whether it's our Insta location whether it's our YouTube location or whether you're just in the church building when people come to church they want to hear a word from the Lord they don't want to hear what we believe and what we think they want to know what we know about God So not only do we go to observation, not only do we go to investigation, interrogation, and interpretation, but step number five is that we have to go to application. In other words, don't suck up all of God's word, but yet don't want to use it for your own application. When we look at this application from our exegete, then we'll find out if we are properly looking at the word of God. So check this out. The reason this is so important, Sister Miller, is because there have been so many deaths since last year this time. And it seemed like to me that the end is not in sight. And it does not matter if we die from COVID-19, cancer, diabetes, congested heart failure, heart attacks, or anything else. God's word will remain the same. So now from the pulpit and from, from the pew, from family members, we must know the difference in what we say to people when it's according to to God's word. When it's my word, I can say what I want. But when it's God's word, I have a responsibility. And the reason why I have the responsibility, and I want to go ahead and tell you tonight, is because we do not have the right to make a determination for what God's word means when we were not the ones chosen to author the book. We don't have the right. And since, since we do not have God's permission. Nor the copyrights to the authors that wrote it. We do not have the right to change what they meant. Or what God charged them to write. Just to fit our own personal entertainment theory. We may not want to admit it, but many of us utilize these scriptures together because we're trying to get a revival somewhere. Some of us are trying to get a speaking engagement at the next workshop. Folk are hurting. And we're grandstanding. And we grandstand according, yes we do, to the applaud of the crowd. But I tell you what COVID-19 has done, Brother Moshe, COVID-19 has made us stand up on God's word because you have no crowd to holler back at you. COVID-19 has made us study more because now we have to stand flat-footed and preach and teach God's word and we can't sugarcoat folk. I tell them, can I get a witness? So tonight, I believe we get caught up too much in trying to please people instead of pleasing God. 
Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy 2 and 15. He didn't say change. He didn't say edit. He says study. And his study says study to show thyself approved. And the approval don't come from the pew. But the approval comes from God. Because if we rightly divide the word, we'll find out that we don't have to be ashamed when God calls on us. And that's where we go tonight with these two passages of scriptures. When we look at these passages of scriptures, I tell you again tonight that they can appear to be parallel. Parallel means that they run in the same direction. Not only can they appear to be parallel, but these two can really seem comparable. Because there are some things in both of them. But yet they're talking about two separate situations. Not only can they seem and be comparable, but they can even appear to be talking about the same thing. Because they're mentioning and they're talking about death. And if we want to really get deep enough, they can altruistically seem as if Paul is receiving and repeating himself in a didactic, instructive manner. Because his articulation can seem as if it's parallel to the church at Thessalonica as well as the church at Corinth. But watch this as we move through these. These passages of scripture, it looked like it. But let me go ahead and tell you, yes again, I totally agree that most celebrations, most, most, most graduations, most, most home-going celebrations, most funerals that, 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 that may have an everlasting effect on the people, some folk may not have a clue. But the point is, whether they have a clue or not, God has the last say so. And these are some facts to demonstrate these Harmonial tendencies. They're both talking about death. But we talked on last week. And when we talked on last week, we found out that the word sleep that's in Corinthians and the word asleep that's in Thessalonica have the exact same Greek number, which informs us that there are two words that are not homonyms, but they're simonyms. They're synonyms because they have the same meaning. That one says sleep in verse 51, but yet in Thessalonians 4 and 13, the other one says asleep. But the Strong's Greek number both says 2837, which lets me know that when he said the word sleep, when he says the word asleep, he really was talking. I think I took you through the story. I won't go back through it all the way tonight. That Lazarus, my servant, my friend, Mary's and Martha's brother is asleep. And just like church folk and believers, those that were close to him didn't know what he meant. That, 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 that the Lord himself had to clarify says he's dead and here it is as we dig that 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 we do not want to get off track by thinking that these the, these two scriptures have the same meaning but rather that they're talking about different things I think I told you last week that the book of Corinthians chapter 15 51 through 58 is talking about bodies of a translated living it's talking about our bodies being translated. And that's why he says, I pull off mortality and put on immortality. I pull off corruption and put on incorruption. He's telling us that our bodies will have to go through translated living. And while it's going through translated living, somebody can write it in your chat. Somebody can write it in your feed that you're not worried about death because you know your body going to have a translated living. Not only 
Does Corinthian talk about this translated living, but it talks about a radical change of the body. Somebody need to write in your feed tonight that my body will go through a radical change. It'll go through a radical change. It's a radical change of the body. I need you to pour that in your chat. I need you to pour that in your IM and your DM that you are not worried. You're not concerned because even though our bodies get feeble on this side, you know when it's all over that your body and and my body will go through a radical change. Not only is it a radical change, not only is it a rapid change at the rapture, but I want you to know it's a promise of the future transformation. And we will be transformed. And because we will be transformed, because we have a radical change of the body, then Paul, when he writes to the church at Corinth, he's dealing with the translated living. But watch this. I did tell you that they did not mean the same thing. Because when you flip to 1 Thessalonians, Sister Langston, when you flip to it, I see you, when you flip to it in chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, then it takes on a different category because it's no longer talking about the body, but Sister Lang Lang is now talking about the revelation concerning the dead. That was a talk about some dead folk, and Paul had to let them know that this is not the end, but I want you to know that it's a revelation of something that you could not handle. He talks to us and he says, the reason why I want you to know about the dead is because it's the coming of Jesus Christ. And I want to address problems associated, here it is with that word again, with the parousia. That word parousia means, it takes on another meaning in the Greek, and that word parousia means that is Jesus' second coming. And I want to go ahead and pause right there and ask anybody that you'll wave at me, that you'll let your left hand meet your right hand, or you'll let your pen do the walking, or let your fingers do the talking, that you would agree with me that you know that Jesus is coming back. And that's some good news tonight that I know he's coming back. And that means that even though this old body of mine begins to decay, I don't have to worry about the leak in my old building because I know I have another building. And I believe, Brother Stillwell, that's what John was talking about when John said, in my father's house are many mansions. And that's why I tell you, you have to study and make sure you utilize the five steps. Because what I found out, Reverend White, that when I take the application of the text, it tells me that it's all right, Pastor Robinson used to say, for a house to be in a mansion. Behind the world, how large is heaven if you have mansions in a house? Now, that's on the application side. But when I go to the theological side, what he's really telling me is on the other side in my father's house are many dwelling places. And let me tell you about dwelling places. If you get there before me, you don't have to save me no seat. You don't have to look for me no house. You don't have to step out of my golden slippers because I know on the other side, I got a brand new building. And when I get to my brand new building, you can't stop it. You can't shake it. You can't break it. It belongs to me so watch this as we look at these scriptures I saw something and what I saw in the text it bothered me because when we look at the text we are good for trying to make it appear as if it's the same thing can I go back through it again? This is what we say. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brother. Concerning them which are asleep. And here we go. But I'll show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we should be all be changed. In a moment and a twinkling of an eye. Here we go. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Here we go. And when he comes, good God Almighty, 
for this corruption must put on incorruption. And this mortality shall put on immortality. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. And I sure wish they had put a name there, but they wouldn't put Michael there for me. But it says the archangel. I wish I could just put Michael right there. And with the trump of God, good God Almighty, then we flip it back over. When we flip it back over, we say these things. We go talk about this trumpet, and when we get to the trumpet, we say then the last trump shall sound. And the dead in Christ shall be raised. And he shall be raised incorruptible. Then I say, comfort ye with these words. Can I tell you, I got a couple of shouts right there. Anybody shout it with me right there? Let me go ahead and tell you, anybody shout it with me right there? You messed up the wrong shout because all I did was butcher two texts and put it together. Well, Brother Mo Shaker put some music to it. And when he put some music to it, all I'm going to do is take them two wrong texts and go to Calvary. And somebody going to shout and tell me that the preacher sure did preach. Because I'm going to tell you something like this. That one Friday on a hill called Calvary. That I come to let you know that Jesus did die. And somebody know he died, but bright early on the third day morning, he got up with all power. And somebody gonna shout right there. But I want to tell you, hold your shout. Hold your shout. Hold your peace. Put your naked hands down and make sure you go back and investigate the text. Because the text that I just gave you, God will punish me if I let you get out of here shouting. So anybody that ran around your house just then, you need to go back and retract your steps. And the reason why you need to retract your steps is because that's not what the verse says. But I can tell you that it's talking about the same Trump. It's talking about the same God. And let me give you some sideline coaching. When it said that the Lord himself shall descend here's your shout right here it's telling me that the same way he ascended the Lord Jesus will descend and what it let me know he's not going to send nobody else but he's coming himself oh good God of my so I know that I got to get out of here but I want to make sure you know that when I look at this text, and I look at this 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians 15, I have to tell you that if your body is going to be part of the translated living, I'm not going to try to fool you tonight, but I will inform you what the text says tonight Paul talks to the Corinthian church and as he talks to the Corinthian church Paul says behold I'll show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment and a twinkling of an eye and at the last trump y'all for the trumpet shall sound and the dead yes sir shall be raised incorruptible and we shall all be changed somebody here tonight know that this old body is beginning to dissolve somebody here tonight knows that this old body is beginning to decay my steps are getting shorter and my walk is getting broader and I mind begin to become forgetful and all 
Lord, I'm trying to tell you uh, the hills are getting steeper and the mountains are getting higher. The valleys are getting lower and my body's getting weaker. But what I realize uh, is that one day uh, when it's all over, when this old body uh, shall go back to the dust uh, from whence it came, uh, don't you cry for me uh, because I'll be in a better place in one glad morning when this life is over I know what you're looking for I tell you I put off mortality and put on immortality and when I look at the text it tells me when it's done and all over death will be swallowed up in victory and because death will be swallowed up in victory I come by to tell you tonight victory is all mine is that anybody here that know you have the victory you are the place in your feet I got to victory because I have Jesus Christ and I want you to know that Paul didn't leave us there he said oh dead where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory I got to tell you uh, where my shouting piece is when I get to uh, verse number 57 and it says but thanks uh, be to God uh, which giveth me uh, us the victory uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ I thought you figured uh, I was going to leave you alone uh, but I came over to tell you uh, when my body uh, is translated uh, Paul said uh, you gonna look for me and I'll be gone but I shall not have you be ignorant brother concerning those who died and gone before us because when I talk about how good the Lord is concerning them which are dead the Bible says which are asleep and I told you earlier in my little teaching message that asleep means they are already dead don't you dare cry for them as if there is no hope is there hope in your heart tonight is there hope in your prayer tonight when you pray pray for me but if you heard in the morning that Dr. Miller is going on the other side I want you to know when I get over there there are 12 gates to the city and I'm going to go in the gates and I want you to know you think I'm having church tonight on the other side I'm going to really have church but Paul says to us in the Thessalonica he says for if we believe that Jesus he died and he rose again even so them it's a shouting piece that died in him the Lord will bring them back and those who are alive and remain cannot and shall not keep us down I come to tell you for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord for which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them yes sir which are asleep from the Lord himself shall descend from heaven and when he come he's not going to be quiet when he come he's not going to be silent but he will he will he'll come with a shout with a loud noise of the archangel I come to tell you that I know that he's coming with the trump of God and dead in Christ shall rise rise first then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up and when we're caught up stop lying to folk my mama 
and my daddy not gonna walk uh, and come get me but we shall we shall we shall be caught up uh, in the air and we will uh, meet the Lord uh, I come to tell ya comfort ye uh, with these words uh, can I get out of here you shouted for Paul uh, you shouted for Corinth uh, you shouted for Thessalonica but you ought to shout for yourself uh, because we believe uh, that one Friday uh, I say Friday is there anybody get happy about Friday he died didn't he die he died oh, yeah. I said he died didn't he die how do you know that he died Matthew said he died Mark said he died Luke said he died John said he died Paul said he died my grandma said he died but I found out for myself he died he died oh yeah but bright early I said early I said early on the third day morning with all power in his hand power power oh yeah I know it's all right. I know it's all right. I know. to wave ever that know he's been good to you. Come on, wave ever tonight. God has smiled on me. He has said, anybody free tonight? Me 
free Oh, God has smiled all on me He's been to me amazing grace somebody know about that how sweet the sound the shade the like to join, go ahead and put it in your chat that you want to join the church tonight. That you want to be a part of the Mount Hebron family tonight. If you're on Facebook Live, you can put it in your I am or your inbox. That tonight is your night. That you've made Mount Hebron your choice. That you would like to come and be a part of this worship, praise, teaching, preaching, and reaching experience. If you're on Instagram tonight, you can place it in your DM. Whatever your social media feed is, we ask that you would do that. If you're viewing us on YouTube tonight, there's a phone number for each of you. And that phone number is 713 713-733-9170. 713-733. 733-9170. May God bless you. May God keep his our prayer. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise wherever you are. Come on, come on, come on. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. You ought to go ahead and put it in your feet. Put some clapping hands in your feet if the Lord has been good to you. Put some clapping hands in your chat. Put it in your IM. Put it in your DM. Wave your hand. Let your left hand meet your right hand. If the Lord has been good to you, go ahead and let somebody know you are not ashamed of the gospel. Let me tell you tonight. We serve a good and rich God. We may come back next week. And this may be the conclusion. But one thing I do know. Those of you that have listened to the last two weeks of teaching and part of the preaching tonight. You won't intertwine these two scriptures anymore. Daughter, when you teach your class Saturday, you won't intertwine these two. Sister White, when you sing a song with these verses, you won't intertwine these two. It's our offertory period now. And we want to give you the opportunity to Hit your give la five. Want to get your opportunity to go to the cash out. Want to give you the opportunity to come by and drop it in the mail slot. We'll be here for at least an hour. Want to give you the opportunity to be a blessing to someone else. To our visitors that's on with us tonight. If this word and these songs that have been ministered to us, this prayer, this scripture, if it has been a blessing to you, if you have been blessed, sow a seed into the ministry. 
those that are in leap, lift, and prime, those that are in bad and brotherhood, we ask that you would make sure that you go to your Giblify, Mount Hebrew Missionary Baptist Church, Houston, Texas. Or go to the Cash App, dollar sign, the Mount, 7817. And you would make sure you go there and place your tithes, your offering, your offering for the week. And put in the memo where you would want them to go. So that we can make sure that we give you a bountiful blessing from the Lord. God, how we thank you for these funds that you have given and are giving right now. That you give to us that we can give back to you. Because you've been so good to us. It's not that we just have to give, we want to give. Because even though we know we can't beat you giving, we're going to do the best that we can. Bless those that have already given. Bless those that are giving right now. And touch the heart of those who have not given. We ask this in the eternal everlasting enduring name of Jesus and for his sake. Let us stand. Keep on playing that. Let us stand. Come on. Come on. God, you're God all by yourself. You didn't need us to start this world. You will not take direction from us when it's all over. But we thank you for allowing us to be here right now. Master, you know better than I do. There are people suffering. People are suffering from sicknesses. People are suffering from pain. People are suffering with mental distress. People are hurting from losing a loved one on this side. Some of us are just tired. being sick and tired. God, I want to offer a special prayer to my sister, Sister Gladys Houston and my nieces, Sister Tanya Houston and Shonda Houston. I want to offer a prayer for the fourth missionary family. I want to lift up Pastor Lavelle Griffin. God, there's so many I don't know about. But I know you know. We thank you for the word tonight. That even though these words are concerning the dead, they are actually words for the living. And Lord, when this old world can afford us no more, We have to fold up our hymn books and our Bibles to study war no more. Please, sir, have mercy and afford us a place in your kingdom. 
And for that, we'll say thank you. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, And the communion of the Holy Ghost rests with us all. We say amen, amen, and amen. May God bless you tonight. May God bless you. May God keep you in his ever-loving peace. I bid you good night. Bye now.